Welcome to Biomimicry Academy, where you learn from nature and design for people and planet. In order to apply biomimicry, we have to use a different mindset. We cannot ask how nature builds a car. We cannot ask how nature builds a computer, because these are stupid questions, because nature doesn't build these things. But if we look at the function that we want to accomplish by building these products and machines, then we get to a more functional question. And that is exactly what we need to do in order to find strategies and solutions in the biological world. We need to ask a functional question like, how does nature mobilize things? How does nature transport things? How does nature communicate? How does nature create color? How does nature, how does nature save energy? And so on. So these are questions that are very relevant in the biological world. We'll find inspirations and we can bring them into the human problem solving world. When we look at biomimicry innovation and bio-inspired innovation, there are three different levels of how we can take inspiration from nature. The first and most simple one is a form or material that we can mimic. The second level is a process. This could be an assembly process. It could be a biochemical or chemical process. And the third level is a systems level. This is something that entails more elements in integration. And from left to right, those are more advanced and more complicated, but also the effect and the impact we can possibly have is much larger. We'll lead you through an example for each of them now. Let's start with the form. What you see here is a humpback whale. And as you can see, the leading edge of its front flippers is not straight. And this is in stark contrast to what we built as humans, as engineers. Because what we would try to do when we have, for instance, airplane wing or wind turbines, these surfaces are always straight because we want to avoid turbulences. But what nature does is exactly the opposite. It builds little structures like here, these bumps, these tubercles, and they create turbulences. But these turbulences, as an effect, reduce the drag and increase the uplift. That is important for this sea mammal to navigate, to maneuver more agile. But if we transfer that design to our machines and mechanisms, then we we'll see huge efficiencies in both material and energy. Because if we build wind turbines having these structures, we can reduce the length of such blades and they run more efficiently. This is not so much used in wind turbines, and you may wonder why. Well, the reason is that the inventors of these mechanisms, they were not necessarily very good at business modeling and business integration. And that is something that we will teach you. So the invention of a mechanism that leads to an efficiency and improvement is not by definition innovation. Innovation requires the understanding and full integration into the market and the vertical of market dynamics. And this is something that we will teach you throughout this course as well. The second level of biomimicry is process. One example we want to show you here is part of the built environment. When we build today, we use a lot of cement. The problem with cement is that creating cement, producing cement is a very energy intensive process. Per ton of cement, we produce about one ton of carbon dioxide. So interestingly, in nature, we find a process that's exactly opposite. It is called biomineralization. And we know this effect from coral reefs. Coral reefs, when we look at the material, is identical to the material we use as cement. It's calcium carbonate. But this calcium carbonate in coral reefs is not made by producing carbon dioxide, but it's exactly the opposite. It uses atmospheric carbon dioxide and fixes it into a material, into a built material. So this is inverting the equation. And it's not only about reducing the carbon dioxide emissions, but having a positive footprint. So binding, capturing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And this is something that is possible. There are various companies already that produce cement in that way. Calera, Blue Cement. These are two examples for companies that develop the process that can bind and fix atmospheric carbon dioxide and make building material out of it. And this radically transforms the way we build and has a huge impact because it can 
massively reduce the footprint of carbon dioxide that we create in the built environment. The third level of biomimicry is the systems level. This is where it becomes more complex, but this is also where it becomes very interesting because the impact can be huge. Systems level biomimicry can involve various things. It can be something about organizational design, because here we can learn, for instance, from swarm organisms, how we can communicate in a better way, how we can transport information, how we can react in an adaptive way to disturbances. This is something that nature can teach us on a systems level. Algorithms from ants can be used for logistic processes, for algorithms that improve certain decision-making processes. Or it can be used to plan smart cities. How different stakeholders, different systems, different infrastructures work together in order to create something that can accommodate the number of people that will live in these cities, as we pointed out earlier, within this large megatrend of urbanization. So here we have the three levels, the level of form, the level of process, and the level of system. From the left to the right, moving to more complexity, but also larger impact. So thinking in ecosystems and systems allows us to bring different stakeholders and different existing, but also emerging technologies together in synchronicity and to create something that is viable. It allows us to not only think about efficiency, because it's not only about improving things that are already existing, because sometimes improving something that is bad doesn't lead to a good solution, but maybe just to a bad solution that is even more destructive, but rather thinking about effectiveness. What is maybe this new thing that should replace that old thing and make it obsolete because it is the new way of doing things. And that leads us to more responsibility. It leads us to new and more sustainable business practices, and it creates entirely new opportunities of how to run businesses and business models. So what we went through here were the four elements of responsible innovation. The first one being human-centered design. What is the need, the why of why we do certain things? The second is biomimicry, bio-inspired innovation. How do we create sustainable solutions that are inspired by systems that have been working for millions and billions of years? The third element being circular economy and systems thinking. How do we not only create a single solution, but something that is embedded into a larger whole? And finally, the fourth element is about business modeling. How do we integrate it into a viable market economy that allows us to reach out to customers and create value and capture value? This then will allow you, and this is what we'll teach you in the upcoming modules, to learn about entrepreneurship, how you can set up a business and scale your idea from an invention to an innovation into the marketplace. It allows us to integrate technologies and create digital business models and think along how can we harvest abundance like exponential organizations do. It will allow you to look at how do I create a viable and competitive, viability and competitive markets, as we basically almost have, Ah. And it will also allow you to create business models that are viable on a competitive market, but also work in collaboration and network with other stakeholders to, in order to create value and mutual benefit that creates a world that we want to live in. Let us end with a quote from Steve Jobs. He said, one of the biggest innovations of the 21st century is the intersection of biology and technology. He was talking about a new era, and this is something that you can be co-creators of. If you want to know more about biomimicry, visit www.biomimicryacademy.com and become a biomimicry practitioner.